All right, guys, imagine yourself sitting at home, relaxing, watching TV, then all of a sudden your heart rate jumps up from a normal to 150 to 250 beats per minute. It's probably the most common and most scary experiences to go through. SBT is the topic today, AKA the merry-go-round from hell. I'll explain the pathophysiology of why we call it this in just a little bit. But first, what exactly is SBT? Well, supraventricular tachycardia is episodes of rapid heart rate that starts in a part of the heart above the ventricles. Which makes sense because supra means above, ventricular means the ventricles, and tachycardia is heart rate over 100 beats per minute. So what's really going on in the body here? Well, as you guys know, the heart has one main pacemaker and two backup pacemakers. In this case, our main pacemaker, the SA node, fires like normal, but the problem is somewhere near the AV node area. The charge jumps from normal conduction and kind of derails and jumps the train tracks. Instead of going down to the ventricles, it goes right back into the atriums, essentially doubling the amount of beats per minute. It's kind of like a merry-go-round from hell. So let's interpret this EKG. Step number one is the rate, 150 to 250. That's like super fast. Step two is the rhythm. It's regular, guys. It's evenly spaced apart. Step three is our P wave. The atriums are contracting, but it's usually buried in the T wave. Now, step four is our PR interval. Usually, it's not able to measure because it's going so fast. And lastly, step five, our QRS is normal and narrow. Now, the causes of SVT. What causes this merry-go-round from hell? Well, the main causes are quite simple. We use the three S's. Stimulants, sepsis, and stress. So stimulants like caffeine, cigarettes, and alcohol, which I call the three wise men, but even exercise can stimulate the heart rate and make it go buck wild. Now sepsis, just fancier words for infection in the blood, can cause fever and added stress to the body. Even stress like anxiety from normal daily emotional struggles. We have to read all these pages? But also diseases that put added stress on the heart, like CAD that cause the narrowing of the coronary arteries and puts added stress on the heart. Or CHF, known as heart failure, increases blood pressure and puts pressure on the heart. And also myocarditis and rheumatic heart disease, known as rheumatic fever, both cause inflammation in the heart. And even COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, makes it difficult for the body to get oxygen, which ultimately adds stress to the body. So what are the signs and symptoms of SVT? Well, once again, they all stem from this low oxygen, this low cardiac output. We'll see classic complaints like, I feel lightheaded or I may pass out. So we use our cool little acronym collapse to describe all the problems that low oxygen gives our patients. And yes, guys, we did spell it wrong on purpose. So please don't email us. Now, C is for chest pain. O is for oxygen saturation that is lower. L is for lethargy or fatigue caused by this low oxygen. A is from anxiety, usually caused by that lack of oxygen. P is for palpitations that described as a racing of the heart or kind of feels like gallops under the chest. S is for shortness of breath or dyspnea, that difficulty breathing. E is from elevated ventricular rate or heart rate in general, huge indication of SVT. You can have a very tacky heart rate. D is for dizziness and syncope, which is also called fainting or passing out. All right, so now that we know what's wrong, what are we gonna do about it? So here are some nursing interventions and treatments, but first, what is the main patient outcome goal? Well, we always want to reset and restore the heart to normal electrical function. So we use non-drug interventions first. So guys, write that down, please. First things first, we use a Valsalva maneuver, also known as a vagal maneuver. We ask the patient to bear down like they're pooping. Now this elicits a vagal response and drops the heart rate. Now I've even seen people use ice packs around the neck, which can elicit a vagal response too, because they kind of like tense up. Now if that doesn't work, we use good old fashioned pharmacology. So the first things first, adenosine will lower the heart rate immediately, but it'll actually stop the heart rate too, and the patient will die if we give too much. So before we give it, there's some things that need to take place first. For example, the patient needs to sign a consent form, the doctor needs to be at the bedside, there needs to be a crash guard in the room, the patient has to be on the EKG monitor as well as the cardiac monitor. Woo! That's a lot to check off here. Mm -hmm. And we got the lunch. Perfect. 
Now, if the drugs aren't working, we can always opt out for cardiac ablation, which is basically just burning or freezing the cells in the heart that are causing the problem. Or we can do electrocardioversion, our little baby shock. It's only 50 to 200 joules of electricity. It's given to reset that SA node, the main pacemaker of the heart. Now, once again, cardioversion is mainly used for AFib or A-flutter, but also for SVT. We're always going to want to do a TTE, a transthoracic echocardiography, which basically is a procedure to rule out clot formation in the atriums. Before we shock the heart, we don't want to spread those clots all over the body. Now, a little NCLEX tip for you guys. Cardioversion is not defibrillation. Defibrillation is that super size shock. At 200 to 360 joules of electricity, it's usually done when we have deadly rhythms like V-fib or pulseless v tac Now, lastly, when the patient is stable and they're gonna get discharged from the hospital, we need to educate the patient about the prevention and limit of triggers. And remember the triggers are the three S's, stimulant, stress, and sepsis. They also may be prescribed drugs like the B, C, and D, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and digoxin. All are given to slow the heart rate and keep that even rhythm. I call them the famous negative chronotropic drugs because chronos meaning time, so negative time means less beats per minute. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.